election on September 3rd last year. Uh, and this particular cohort is unique uh, because in March, uh, they experienced the evolution of how to craft public policy due to a pandemic. With remote committee hearings, social distance precautions were implemented for public safety. Through it all, APAC's fellows were there to support the work of their host offices. Continuing the mission of increasing AAPI representation at all levels of government, APAC hopes that this experience allows each of the fellows to further their professional development so that they can build a meaningful career as part of the public service ecosystem. It is also APEC's mission to build coalitions with other communities because diverse representation, whether as staff, as our elected leaders, brings a wide range of perspectives that allows us to truly be a representative democracy. Herein lies our future. You will always be a part of Apex family, and I hope that you will continue to see Apex as a resource. We owe a debt of gratitude to co-founders, former Secretary Norman Y. Mineta and former Delegate Robert Underwood. It was a shared vision that allowed for AAPI elected congressional leaders to be recognized as a caucus that led to the creation of Apex. And we're so honored to have former Secretary Norman Y. Mineta joining us today. This work would not be possible without the support of our partners. I'd like to recognize Amazon, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Southwest, Toyota, and Wells Fargo. I'd also like to thank the congressional offices that hosted the APAC Fellows. We are here to serve KPAC, and we're, and we're proud of our affiliation as its educational arm. Let's also give a round of appreciation to the APAC's team, Alex Wang, Justin Cohen, Anthony Malaki, and Helen Ruggiero, and all the interns, volunteers, consultants, and board members who support our work. With these uncertain times, it's important to recognize the joy that goes into an accomplishment. With that in mind, let's congratulate the APAC Fellows for their achievements. We would not be able to do this work without KPAC and the leadership of Chairwoman Representative Judy Chu and her team. Elected in 2009, representing California's 27th Congressional District, Congresswoman Chu serves on the House Ways and Means Committee as well as the Small Business Committee. She's a tireless advocate for the AAPI community as well as a leader in the Tri Caucus alongside her colleagues in the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and the Congressional Black Caucus. Please welcome KPAC Chair, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Well, thank you, Madeline. It's so great to be here with all of you for the 2020 APAC Fellowship graduation ceremony. Uh, I know that uh, if it weren't for the circumstances of today, we would be celebrating in person together right this minute. But today is not normal. In fact, my heart is heavy with the dual crisis that we could not have imagined. Over 100,000 dead from coronavirus and the murder of George Floyd, which has brought about so many mass protests across the country demanding change. I have been so inspired to see so many young people from all backgrounds making their voices heard um, because I know that they're paving the way for a better tomorrow. So I wanna thank Madeline and Apex for creating a way for us to come together virtually like this, for us to celebrate our outstanding Apex fellows who likewise give me so much hope for our future in this country. Since its inaugural fellowship class in 1997, the Apex Fellowship Program has given exceptional young professionals the opportunity to be placed in a congressional office and gain valuable legislative experience on Capitol Hill. As a result, it has provided our future leaders with important skills that they can draw on as they move ahead in their careers. In fact, so many of the Apex Fellows I know have gone on to pursue successful careers in public service, and some have even gone on to become elected officials themselves. And it's because of programs like Apex that I can sleep better at night knowing that we have a program in place to groom our AAPI leaders of tomorrow. I am incredibly proud of the Apex Fellows who are graduating today. And I want to especially take this time to boast about my incredible Apex Fellow, that is Warda Kali, who has done such an incredible job over the past nine months, helping on so many important priorities, including my No Ban Act, which fights against Donald Trump's 
Muslim travel bans. While having her in my office, I've been able to witness firsthand how she's been able to apply her past experiences to her work in our office while developing her understanding of the inner workings of our federal government. I just have to say she's been such an invaluable part of our KPAC team and has also assisted my office on foreign policy, civil rights, and immigration issues. She's also had a unique understanding of how to effectively communicate policy ideas to a broader audience and assist it with our press efforts. So my office has truly benefited from Orda's multiple skills and from having Orda as a fellow. We cannot wait to see what the future holds for her. And based on what I've heard about this impressive fellowship class, I know that Manjot, Erica, Ariel, Nicholas, Nari, and Ridwan have also done a very, very outstanding work within the congressional offices. Each of these fellows brought a unique set of skills to their offices when they started last fall. Erica Ninoyu, who was placed in Congress member Grace Meng's office, spent years as a musician educator before completing a master's degree in education policy at the Harvard Kennedy. Manjot Singh, who was placed in the office of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, previously worked in the technology and consulting fields and served as a Coral Fellow. And I want to add that Manjot has been a tremendous help to KPAC and the broader AAPI community throughout his time in the Speaker's office and helped get the Speaker to attend the virtual Asian Pacific American Heritage Month that um, APAX hosted last month. So thank you, Manjot, for that. Ariel Higuchi, who was placed in Representative Ami Berra's office, previously served as a Herbert Scoville Junior Peace Fellow in the Foreign Policy Program at the Brookings Institution. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Johns, who was placed with the Republican Study Committee, previously worked in business advocacy and was a part of both the 2016 Republican National Convention team and the 58th Presidential Inaugural Committee. Nari Rath, who was placed with Senator Jackie Ro Rosen, completed her master's degree in social work and had previously worked in anti-trafficking advocacy. And Ridwan Siddique, who was placed in Senator Tammy Duckworth's office, previously worked for the nonprofit organization, the Afghan Diaspora for Equality and Progress. Well, all of our APEX fellows have applied their unique backgrounds to assisting the legislative efforts of their offices. And through their fellowships, they've been able to gain insight into the issues impacting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders all across the nation. But most importantly, they've learned how important it is for our community to have a seat at the table where the decisions are being made. I look forward to our fellows moving forward with their careers and taking these lessons with them, impacting our policy in America. To our fellows, I hope that you continue to grow as young leaders and help to uplift others who follow in your footsteps. With the potential that I see in all of you, I know that you have bright futures ahead. Again, congratulations to our incredible APAX graduates. Great, thank you so much, Congresswoman Shu, um, for kicking this off and recognizing, um, I also agree, these amazing um, APEX fellows that we have this year and our largest class ever at seven of them. Um, and thank you just so much for your leadership as well too through KPAC and opening us up for this um, celebration today, even though we couldn't do it in person. Um, I'm glad everybody is able to join us virtually from all parts of the country as well. So we're gonna actually now go through our seven fellows and recognize them one by one and allow each of them um, just a few minutes for their sponsors who should be on the call today to just say a few words about um, their fellow and their partnership with APEX and then also turn it over to the host offices. Um, I know we have some members joining us today too. And then finally for the fellow, just for some brief remarks. And so um, following that great introduction from Congresswoman Judy Chu, why don't we kick it over to Sanders who is with Wells Fargo. Sanders, are you on the line? I'm on the line, can folks hear me? Yep. 
Great. Um, so thank you, first of all. Congratulations to all the APEX graduates. We were pleased to um, sponsor Warder Khalid in Chairwoman Chu's office this year. She did phenomenal work, as the Chairwoman said. And on behalf of our Wells Fargo CEO, Charlie Scharf, and 260,000 employees around the world, we are so pleased to be part of the APEX family. Um, last year, our um, fellow, Neil Noronha, worked in Senator Duckworth's office and has gone on to do great things um, in graduate school as well as in military. And APEX are really tra trained the next generation, not of AAPI leaders, but leaders throughout the United States. And we're just so pleased to be part of the program and look forward to be part of the program next year. Again, congratulations to all the APEX graduates and thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Sanders. And so I'm actually going to turn it over now that we've had a uh, Congresswoman Chu speak on behalf of um, Warda. Warda, I'm um, going to recognize you to give some remarks. Yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I thank you so much, Congresswoman Chu, for those uh, really kind words. And it has been such an honor to work in your office. And I see the rest of the Chu crew here. And I am like actually getting emotional because I haven't seen them in three months in person. <laughs> And um, I really just appreciate you being here and for all your support. I want to thank the office, all of, all of the team there for helping me feel like a part of the team there from day one, for giving me challenging assignments, to helping push me and teach me about the Hill and how it works. I want to thank Apex for making this possible for us. Representation is so important in all levels of government. And for me personally, I know what a challenge it was just trying to get on the Hill before this fellowship and APEX made that possible. And I know for myself and the other fellows as well, we really, I mean, this, this opportunity is something that provided us that I don't know if we would have gotten otherwise. So I really appreciate you investing in us, believing in us and supporting us as we went through this journey, um, this nine month, this crazy, this crazy, crazy time. And um, I also wanna thank the fellow fellows uh, for being such a great, support system, a network, whether it was like meeting up to pick up our checks in the cafeteria or <laughs> having our group chat. It was so nice to have this community. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you for where you've been. And I can't wait to remain in touch uh, after this end. So thank you to every single person here for coming and for all your support, Wells Fargo for the sponsorship. And um, I just feel a deep gratitude and appreciation. Thank you. Great, thank you, Warda. Um, been great having you as part of our cohort this year and we're going to go on now to celebrate our second fellow which is going to be Nari Rath who is in the office of Senator Jackie Rosen uh, and to kick off Nari's segment um, I'd like to introduce Kai um, I think I saw you on here a little bit earlier who is our um, sponsor from Amazon this year Thanks, Alex. Thanks, uh, everyone. And we are honored to be part of today's ceremony. And congratulations to Nari and the rest of the fellows for uh, nine months of great experience that I'm sure you guys will all uh, use for bigger and uh, lead to bigger and better things. Amazon and its uh, 700,000 employees worldwide are, are honored to be part of APAX and to support the fellowship program. Um, we think it's uh, extremely important, especially in these trying times, to encourage more young people, especially within the Asian community, to get out and be involved in public policy, um, the Hill, uh, the political mm -hmm. process, etc. So congratulations um, and look forward to working with Apex and the fellows in the future. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kai. Um, and from the Senator's office, I believe we have Grant on the line. Grant, I'm going to recognize you now. Yes, thanks so much. Uh, just wanted to take this opportunity uh, to congratulate all of the fellows and uh, particularly to recognize Nari. Uh, she has just made such tremendous contributions to our team from day one. Um, and with someone who had not worked on Capitol Hill before, it was just wonderful not only to, to watch her growth, uh, but to really see real legislative projects come out of her portfolio, um, both in terms of lifting up the AAPI community uh, Nevada has, uh, I believe, the fastest growing API community in the nation uh, and working with our state team, with our legislative teams, with comms as we put out various statements, uh, particularly during the challenging times of COVID-19 and a, a terrible rise in anti-API hatred. Um, and, and Nari was a huge part of working with us to, to help push back on that, um, but also in the field of combating human trafficking, something I know that 
Nari is passionate about, that Senator Rosen is passionate about, and, and Nari helped spearhead an appropriations effort uh, to uh, work to get robust funding for a critical uh, human trafficking prevention program at DOJ, uh, and, and also working with a lot of different members of our team, our, our mail and correspondence team, and directly talking to constituents uh, in writing uh, on behalf of the senator uh, on a daily basis. And so we're just so thankful to have this opportunity. Uh, thank you to, to APAX and to everybody on the, on the call and congratulations to Nari. Thanks so much, Grant. Um, and Nari, um, I think we're gonna go to you now too to speak for a little bit. Thank you so much, Grant. I just wanna say thank you to APAX. Um, this was really like a lifetime, once in a lifetime opportunity um, I wanted to come to DC to be more connected um, with my racial and ethnic background. And I can definitely say that this experience um, has helped me relish in my identity as a first generation Cambodian American and the daughter of refugees. Um, I also wanted to thank um, everyone in, t uh, you know, in the office, in my office t t with Team Rosen and for always supporting me and remaining patient with me and um, helping me navigate on the hill for the first time and seeing me grow. Um, and thank you to all my friends and family in Connecticut that have always supported me and loved me along the way. Great, thanks so much, Nari, and congratulations to you as well. Um, and next up, I would like to invite Caitlin, who is our representative from Coca-Cola, to speak to. And our partnership with Coca-Cola, we have two fellows, actually. Uh, and so we're gonna recognize those two fellows who are Ariel, um, with Congressman Vera and Nick, who is with the Republican Study Committee right afterwards. So, um, Caitlin, I'd like to recognize you now. Thank you, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to all of the APAX fellows, especially Ariel and Nick. The Coca-Cola Foundation seeks to empower and positively impact communities around the world. And the way that we do that is not alone, but through partnership and by supporting the good work of our community leaders and their impactful programs. Our support of APAX aligns with the belief and the importance of leadership development in inclusion and having a seat and a voice at the table that is heard and in diverse representation of leadership in order to better serve us all. And I say to you all personally, that while there is so much trauma and turmoil today, each of you have been called for such a time as this. You personify the dreams that your ancestors near and far couldn't dare to dream. I look forward to how you will continue to lead our communities, this country and the world forward into, project, into progress. Thank you again for the opportunity to support and to be a partner with APEX and congratulations to you all. Thank you, Caitlin, um, and thank you for your continued support of our program as well, too, and our fellowship program. Uh, and so right now, it's my distinct honor to um, welcome for some brief remarks, uh, Congressman Ami Vera, who is actually my former boss as well, too, as I was a former Apex Fellow um, in his office in 2015, um, and here to speak a little bit about their fellow this year, Ariel Higuchi. Congressman Vera, um, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. And my story always starts, you know, as a, a young 20-year-old intern in Washington, D.C. in 1985. Um, as a South Asian, I didn't see um, anyone who looked like me on the Hill and saw very few AAPIs. So I want to express my gratitude to programs like APAC's Fellowship Program for really increasing the number of folks that um, are on the Hill from our community because we deserve that seat at the table. And, and Congresswomen choose leadership of KPAC to help expand the number of API members of Congress and Senate. Yeah, it's been my honor to have a, an APAC fellow almost every year and to just watch what they've done. And we expect Ariel to do that, that, that same magnificent um, trajectory like Alex and, and others. You know, she brought an enthusiastic spirit to the, the office. You know, her background um, in, you know, homelessness and affordable housing, but that, you know, she contributed there, she contributed on the Science, Space and Technology Committee. So 
we expect great things out of Ariel. And again, it's always about paying it forward and, and, and passing the torch to the next generation. So keep sending the Apex fellows to our office. We love them. Thank you so much, Congressman. Um, Ariel, you're recognized now. Hi, everyone. Um, I am just incredibly grateful for this opportunity. Um, first, I want to thank um, our sponsors and Caitlin from Coca-Cola um, for giving us this opportunity. Um, of course, I want to thank um, Apex as an organization for making this possible. Um, as Warda explained, it is very difficult to get onto the Hill and to have the opportunity to work on the Hill as an Apex Fellow um, and and have the opportunity to contribute to an office and get into some good work from the start is really just um, an amazing experience. And of course, I am so grateful to the office, to Congressman Barra and to his team. Um, I feel like I couldn't have asked for a better team to be a part of. And uh, I say that just, um, they have been incredible mentors. Um, have given me the opportunity to learn so much um, and to contribute, whether it was a science based and tech portfolio, foreign policy, domestic issues like affordable housing. I just feel incredibly grateful. And of course, to round it all out, um, I'm thankful for the community that Apex has given me. Um, not only the community of my cohort, but also the Apex alumni who have been with us every step of the way, um, especially to uh, my Apex alumni mentors. I'm. I'm just incredibly grateful. So thank you so much. And I actually uh, just received um, news this morning that um, my uh, fellowship with Congressman Bear's office will be um, temporarily extended for some time. So I'm really thankful th for the opportunity to get to continue to contribute to your office. So thank you. Thank you. And congratulations to you as well on all of your success and what's coming down the line next. Um, at this time, I want to turn it over to recognize Nick Johns with the Republican Study Committee. And speaking from his office, we have the Executive Director, Dan, on the line. Dan, you're recognized. Great. Well, thank you for having me today. It's great to be here. Uh, I just want to say first that we thoroughly enjoyed having Nick on, on our team over these last few months. Uh, first thing I'll say about Nick is he just has a, a great attitude. Um, he's, uh, you know, a great to be around. Uh, he took every task and project with uh, the same great attitude, whether it was big or small. Um, and that spirit was, uh, was really great to, to help, uh, you know, help the team out as we have, a, as we had a lot going on this year. Um, he really joined us at a, at a critical time. We were short staffed uh, most of the time that he was with us. And so we really relied on him to, to plug a lot of gaps that we had. And um, so he got to do some, uh, some really great work. He helped with our uh, uh, American Worker uh, Task Force project. Uh, you know, he stayed up late several times with our staff, reading through, uh, you know, omnibus bills and helping us uh, uh, dig through legislative text. And so he really, uh, he really contributed and helped uh, helped our team be able to uh, stay on track and meet our goals and targets uh, over this last uh, over these last few months. Um, Nick is always going to be part of our extended RSC family. Uh, we, uh, we really appreciate everything that he's done for us, and uh, we certainly look forward to kind of watching his uh, career go forward, and we're, we're there to help along the way in any way that we can. Um, uh, I also want to thank the Asia Pacific American Institute for Commercial Studies for sending him our way. We appreciated having him, we'd, and we'd love to uh, have uh, future fellows to, down the road if that's, uh, if that's uh, uh, doable and possible. Um, but thanks a lot, Nick. We, uh, we, uh, we appreciate everything. Thanks, everybody. Great. And Nick, you're recognized now. Great. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, you know, thank you, Dan, for uh, the very, you know, heartwarming uh, comments. Uh, means a lot to me. It's been a fantastic experience working with the Republican Study Committee, uh, you know, even during these uh, pretty unusual, unprecedented, and crazy times. Um, you know, I want to thank, you know, obviously, Caitlin and Coca-Cola for, um, you know, allowing this opportunity to take place, and obviously to uh, APAC staff as well. Um, I got to know a lot of you uh, through uh, various means before uh, the fellowship, and then, you know, during the little slow start that I had at the start of it, um, you know, it's wonderful to see the hardworking individuals that, uh, you know, make this entire, you know, program uh, really a success and uh, continuing legacy in, in Washington, D.C. 
Um, it's been a fantastic uh, experience to get to know all my other uh, fellows in the cohort. Um, I'm very excited to see where they go in their careers and, um, you know, very excited to see, um, you know, future success in Apex. And I always want to be sure to, uh, you know, help push the, you know, the ball forward in terms of uh, expanding, you know, API representation, uh, you know, with the, you know, Republicans and Democrats and vice versa. I think it's an important mission and it's very, uh, it's very great to see the, the great work that everybody's done and will continue to do in uh, the public policy space or if they choose to do something else. So thanks again for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Nick, and congratulations to you too as well. Uh, I just want to make a quick note. I'm seeing in the chat, it's pretty active, um, and I'm glad people are taking this time to kind of celebrate however we can, I guess, in this virtual setting. So feel free to drop your comments. Congratulations to all the fellows in there as well. Uh, I see some of you guys even were able to change your names to recognize the fellow that you're here to support today too. So uh, feel free to try to use all those virtual tools that we can. Um, and just thanks again, you know, for all of you guys joining us on this awesome, uh, you know, celebration for our fellows this year. So next, I'd like to recognize our next fellow who's gonna be Manjo, who is this year's um, Bristol Myers Squibb Fellow in the office of Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And to kick off Manjo's segment, I'd first like to um, introduce um, and recognize his sponsor, uh, Dr. Chen, if you're on the line. Yeah, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, really honored to introduce the next congressional office and the fellow. Um, first, I want to introduce Bristol Myers Squibb since this is our first year to sponsor this fellowship. So BMS is a global biopharmaceutical company that has a single vision, which is transforming patients' lives through science. So we are dedicated to our mission of discovering, developing, and delivering uh, innovative medicines and life-saving medicines to our patients and help them to prevail over serious diseases. Uh, so personally, I'm working as a drug product development team leader on several of our oncology drugs that we are developing. So uh, as one of the largest uh, people business group uh, at the Bristol Myers Group, the Pan Asian Network, uh, so we strongly believe <coughs> me, we strongly believe that the uh, um, the diverse experiences and different perspectives will bring out the best ideas and the drive the innovation for the drug product development. Uh, so we are very privileged to partner with organizations like Apex uh, as part of our commitment to diversity and inclusion uh, in the workplace. So similarly, uh, so we are very inspired by this year's Apex impressive fellowship class and are very proud to be part of this fellow's career development for the first time uh, so in recent days, I watched a lot of videos about your previous alumni and, you know, uh, I'm very impressed. So I wish Man Jiang say I've heard a lot from uh, Congresswoman Chu uh, just, just now. And, you know, we wish, you know, I hear a little bit more later, later on. And, you know, wish all the rest of the fellows all the best uh, in the next phase of your journey. So uh, I think next I would like to introduce the uh, uh, Riva Press with the outreach director from the Speaker of the, office, uh, Speaker of the House's office. And I'm sure that uh, she will talk about uh, Manjong uh, uh accomplishment. Thank you, Dr. Chen. And um, Riva, you are recognized now to uh, talk a little bit about Manjo and our partnership with the speaker's office. Riva, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much. Um, on behalf of Speaker Pelosi and our whole office, I wanna thank APAX for this extraordinarily, extraordinary fellowship program um, that brought Manjo to our office this year. It's been a pleasure to work with Manjo. His curiosity about everything, and I say that knowing that I didn't always answer every question. Um, his willingness to learn and his get it done attitude has been an extraordinary bonus for our office. Um, the fellowship also keeps our office I hope, even closer with APAC, KPAC, and our P AAPI partner organizations. I hope we do that okay without a uh, fellow in our office, but I know for a fact we do it so much better with the fellow and with Manjo. Um, he's taken endless notes and staffed endless events and uh, um, did anything that we asked and did research on all sorts of things that came through our doors. 
Um, but one particular project, in one particular project, he mapped the API community for our office to ensure we know which group is focused on which issues and um, in, in a holistic way to ensure that we interact more productively with the community um, as we do outreach moving forward. So I um, just wanted to give you an example of the kind of things that he's been able to bring to the office. So let me just say to you, Manjo, directly, thank you so much for your um, uh, effort, your enthusiasm, your, your time, and um, looking forward to an in-person thank you uh, when this craziness ends. Thank you, Riva, too. Um, I think we're all looking forward to what comes next. Uh, and now I'd like to turn this over to Manjot, too, for some uh, brief remarks as well. Manjot? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you all so much, especially the sponsors, for enabling this opportunity. Um, I'm incredibly grateful. Um, this experience has been a true treasure. Um, I've had opportunities working um, in this office that I could not have ever imagined. Um, I've learned a tremendous amount about the three P's, politics, um, policy, and personalities, and how those three components can mesh or not. Um, I think I've had the opportunity to learn about the inner workings of legislating um, and the integral role that outside groups play in this entire process. Um, I've learned about the effective and maybe not so effective advocacy and some of the tactics and angles that speak the language of the Hill. Um, and just a note on APEX, um, I cannot thank Madeline and Alex, my fellow fellows, APAX alums, enough for the support, the guidance, the friendship that each and every fellow has provided in small ways and large. Um, and I'm so grateful for the support system and I'm really excited to stay in touch. Um, and lastly, I'd like to thank Riva for taking a chance on me, um, providing me with genuinely a once in a lifetime opportunity um, and always prioritizing me getting exposure to a breadth of immersive experiences. Um, this fellowship has been nothing short of historic um, and instructive. I cannot wait to use the knowledge that I that have learned um, and take it with me, um, both from Riva and Team Pelosi, um, and apply it in the future as a lawyer. Um, thank you for everything, Riva, and thank you, Apex, once again for this very treasured opportunity. Great, congratulations to you. Um, and also excited for what is coming next down the line. And it's been great to have you as a fellow. And now we are going to turn to our next fellow to recognize, which will be Erica, who is in the office of Congresswoman Grace Ming. Um, and to kick off the segment with Erica, I'd like to first introduce and bring up Taylor, who is um, one of our sponsors from Pepsi. Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex, Helen, and Madeline. Um, on behalf of PepsiCo, I'd like to congratulate Erica and the fellowship graduates. As a food and beverage company that operates in every corner of the globe, PepsiCo is deeply committed to investing in the communities where we operate and improving the lives of those that call them home. That commitment includes being an active participant in public policy and upholding the values of our employees and consumers. Accordingly, we partner with organizations like APAX that share this commitment and invest in programs, and most importantly, in people. PepsiCo is so proud to support APAX and the fellowship program, and proud to invest in you all, our future leaders. I actually got my introduction to Washington, D.C. through a public policy fellowship about a decade ago, and it opened my eyes to new opportunities. Lastly, I'll just say that we know that policy is sh shaped by the people who make it and the life experiences they've had. And so to all of our fellows, that means while you reflect back on your fellowship experience, I hope you continue to be committed to public service and to making our political process more representative at every level of government. So thank you and thank you for inviting me to celebrate your success with you today. Thank you so much, Taylor Chu, and for your ongoing partnership with us. Um, and now it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome um, to the meeting Congresswoman Grace Meng for some remarks. Congresswoman. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Taylor, and thank you to Madeline and your entire team uh, for putting together this 
a really meaningful uh, virtual graduation. I wish we could all be there in person, but I'm really glad to be able to see everyone uh, all at once. Uh, it's always honor, an honor to be in the presence of Secretary Mineta. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, we probably wouldn't have an APEX and KPAC uh, without your vision. Um, I'm really excited to be here to congratulate our office fellow, uh, Erica, who has been such a joy and pleasure uh, and such a great addition to our team in Washington, D.C. And we've, she's come to New York uh, to the district as well. She has really brought tremendous energy, positivity, strength, creativity, and even Alaskan salmon for us to enjoy. So I really want to thank Erica. You know, I, I, I know we can say this about anyone, but and, and I don't only say nice things about Erica in front of her, but I will tell you, Erica, that uh, even whenever I'm having conversations uh, with people outside of our office uh, in whatever role they may be in, they always compliment uh, Erica and the quality work that she has brought to the table and the compassion and the heart that she brings, which is uh, so much appreciated by Congress and especially by our constituents here in New York. Um, she's focused a lot on education priorities in our office, uh, even working to highlight youth entrepreneurs. We had a gathering some of you were at where many youth entrepreneurs came. I uh, even met a young woman who started her own lemonade business. Um, Erica has been featured in Roll Call because of her foundation in music and her unconventional path to Capitol Hill. So, you know, if we had a, a yearbook, let's pretend we have a virtual yearbook, Erica would probably be uh, most likely to be Secretary of Education. So thank you, Erica, for all that you've done for our constituents, for Congress, for our country. Um, it's so important that we can be uh, a part of groups like APEX to make sure that our voices really are represented uh, in all fields and at all levels of government. Congratulations to all of our graduates and uh, look forward to hearing more of the very best from all of you. Thank you, Congresswoman. And Erica, you're recognized. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much, Congresswoman Meng, for your kind words and um, you know, it's just been an incredible honor to work for you uh, and your office. Uh, thank you to uh, my sponsor, PepsiCo. Thank you, Taylor, for um, your, your uh, words uh, brief, uh, just now as well. And uh, Madeline, Alex, Apex staff and the board, um, you know, this pathway is something that, uh, you know, someone like me really needed uh, when wanting to engage in policy making. So um, for making, uh, thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. Um, and I can't say enough about Team Meng, you know, uh, Helen was my supervisor through APEX. Uh, she's also an APEX alum uh, and the LD um, and Justin, Jackie, you know, all, all of my colleagues, uh, they have really uh, been the reason why I feel like I've been able to grow over the past nine months. Uh, and also to all the fellows, um, thank you so much for your friendship and empathy. And I look forward to uh, growing with you and seeing what, what kind of people we become uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, so, you know, I'm just, proud of what we have been able to accomplish over the last nine months. And, um, you know, it's going to be an honor and I hope that we're able to con continue to work together in some capacity to better uh, this world in our communities. So thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Erica, and congratulations to you too as well. Um, and. Now I'd like to go to our next fellow who is um, our last or seventh fellow, but definitely not the least um, to be recognized, which is gonna be Ridwan 
who is in Senator Duckworth's office. And to kick off uh, Ridwan's section, I'd like to first bring up Sebastian from Toyota and uh, for some remarks. And Toyota has been another one of our amazing sponsors um, who allows programs like this fellowship program to exist so that we can have more APIs, have the opportunity um, to be represented on Capitol Hill. So um, I'll turn it over to you now, Sebastian. Thank you so much, uh, Alex. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Madeline, Alex, and APAX for your steadfast leadership during these difficult times and making sure that uh, our fellows still had a fruitful experience amidst these these uh, challenging times. I also want to thank uh, Congressman Chu and the rest of KPAC for their support and collaboration of this program. Uh, particularly, thank you to Senator Duckworth and, and staff for their leadership. Um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't re recognize uh, Secretary Mineta and his leadership. Thank you for your tutelage and support over the years. And really just on behalf of Toyota Motor North America, I'd like to say congratulations to all the fellows here today, and especially at Ridwan, we're looking forward to bearing witness to yours and your colleagues' future success. Great, thanks so much. Um, and thanks so much, Sebastian. So now I'd like to turn to, um, I believe from Senator Duckworth's office, we have Mark on the line. Mark, you're recognized now to speak. Hey folks, um, hope everybody is staying safe and healthy in these uh, uncertain times. Uh, on behalf of uh, Senator Duckworth and our team in uh, Washington, D.C., I want to thank uh, Ridwan for his active participation in our office over the past several months and uh, really appreciate Toyota's uh, willingness to sponsor him. Um, be, you know, Senator Duckworth wanted to be here, be here herself today and unfortunately has a few other things going on in the, on the calendar that prevents her from uh, joining uh, herself, uh, but my colleague Radha is also on the call and uh, between ourselves, she handles the environment and energy portfolio and I handle the transportation and infrastructure portfolio and Ridwan has been a core uh, a, a pillar of our team um, over the past, uh, geez, has it been a six months, a year now? Um, time flies, uh, especially when you're working from home, I think. Um, uh, Ridwan, for, for my equities, Ridwan has been super helpful in exploring um, uh, consumer protection uh, uh, issues in the, in the transportation space. In fact, Ridwan's uh, excellent work helped uh, convince uh, the National uh, Highway and Traffic Safety Administration to uh, push a certain company towards uh, rethinking their advertising uh, strategy that uh, we viewed as, uh, as inaccurate. Uh, he's also been a big uh, assistant, uh, big assist on maritime uh, legislative efforts that we've been uh, considering, and he's helped me uh, and uh, the senator's team uh, shoulder so much of the burden uh, that we've faced over the last few months as we've all scurried about in our own homes, uh, working remotely and trying to continue to execute uh, on behalf of our constituents in our state. So. Uh, He's been such a tremendous asset, and uh, I want to thank him uh, for his continued service. And we really are excited to see what the future holds for Ridwan and and what uh, next steps he may be considering. I'm not sure if Rather's on the line. My colleague Rather, who also worked with Ridwan, might want to say a few things. Hey guys, can you hear me? I'm so sorry, I was having some technical difficulties. We can hear you. Um, just to reiterate um, what we've heard from Mark and others today, congratulations to all the Apex Fellows. We have been so, um, not just proud of the contributions Ridwan has made to our office, but extraordinar extraordinarily grateful. Um, Ridwan has delivered concrete wins to the people of Illinois in the areas of public health and environmental justice. And we couldn't be, um, we can't, can't thank him enough for his contribution. So as much as we hate to see him go, Toyota, if you're willing to extend his fellowship, we would be grateful <laughs> uh, to keep him on. Um, but we know that he's gonna excel in whatever he decides to, to do. So um, all the best to all the fellows and um, very lucky to have had Ridwan. 
Thank you to the Senator staff and Ridwan. Um, the floor is yours. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I can't express enough gratitude to everybody that has been a part of the process of this fellowship, of course, to APAX for taking a chance on me as someone who was so young, who had just received his bachelor's degree to be accepted into this fellowship and start my career with such an incredible opportunity, working for a leader as incredible as Senator Duckworth. Um, I, I want to thank the uh, rest of the APAX family the alumni and the mentors uh, that I've met and the relationships I've created that have guided me along the journey of this fellowship. Uh, I can't thank um, Senator, Duck Senator Duckworth and the whole Duckworth family enough for the love and the support that you've offered me through this process. Uh, to our legislative director, Ben Roadside, for taking a chance on me and allowing me to, to be a part of the team. Uh, most especially to Mark and Rada for being such incredible mentors for challenging me, for helping me grow, for, you know, allowing me to have the responsibility to work on such incredible uh, initiatives on the Senator's behalf. Um, I've grown so much over the last nine months and, you know, I, it's an incredibly unique time that we're going through right now, but I know that uh, this experience is a foundation upon which I know that myself and the rest of the fellows will continue to grow through them and uh, continue to, you know, uh, provide uh, great things to our country and our future. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much to all of our fellows. Let's give them all a congratulations. We really are proud of you. You leave me so inspired and I look forward to seeing all the good work that you will do in the future. Um, our program still continues. Um, I have the good fortune of introducing an individual who really needs no introduction because really he is the OG, um, the 33rd U.S. Secretary of Commerce, the 14th U.S. Secretary of Transportation, co-founder of KPAC and APAC. Let's give it up for Secretary Norman Y. Mineta. Okay, thank you very, very much, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, really excited to uh, be able to uh, help celebrate this year's class of Apex uh, Fellows. Thanks to Madeline, Alex, Helen, uh, and others for your leadership in helping these fellows uh, to have a tremendous experience. These seven individuals um, <clears throat> have seen a lot of history unfold during their short tenure on Capitol Hill. Through the Apex Fellowship, these fellows are given a front row seat to work on real legislation with real world consequences. And over the last nine months, they have had an opportunity to be a part of our nation's Congress at work. And you have experienced what no one else has ever lived, the confluence of two tragic pandemics, the coronavirus and the tragedy of the murder of Floyd George. I am incredibly proud of the diversity and the experience that all of you bring to the table. Your individual backgrounds and experiences are needed in the legislative pro process. And I hope that each of you will remember that after you have a seat at the table, it does matter how you use that opportunity that is given to you. Since founding KPAC and APAC 26 years ago, we now have the highest number of AAPI members of Congress and staff. The APAC Fellowship Program is an important part of growing that AAPI pipeline in Congress. And I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu, Grace Meng, 
for their tremendous uh, leadership and pushing of this pipeline and including Senator Duckworth and others who have helped along the process. The fellowship allows rising AAPI professionals to work directly with members of Congress and their staff. And I hope this experience has shown all of you the importance of public service, whether you continue your career on the Hill or off. Improving our country takes dedicated public servants committed to putting in hard work. And it takes public servants willing to reach across the aisle and build relationships with people from different backgrounds. And it is my hope that your time on the Hill has shown you why we need more AAPIs in public service. Once again, I'm excited to celebrate uh, with all of you virtually and the rest of the Apex community here today. Thank you for your work on Capitol Hill and best of wishes on your next steps. Congratulations to this year's class of Apex Fellows. Great work. Thank you so much, Secretary Mineta. Um, and I'm really encouraged with all of uh, the comments that you had to and the future of this class um, and this cohort of fellows. Very excited to see what they did in these last nine months and what they'll continue to do. Um, and also I'm loving everybody's comments in the chat too, congratulating each other and uh, the virtual cheers that we're doing um, in this interesting forum. Uh, and as we finish up our celebration today too, I'm going to turn it over uh, to our last speaker who's going to be Priyanka Hugan who is here on behalf of the Apex Fellowship Alumni Association today, just to welcome you all to, um, to the Alumni Association. Priyanka, you're up. Great, thanks, Alex. Um, you've put me in the unenviable position of following Secretary Mineta, so thanks for that. Um, I, as Alex said, I'm Priyanka Hoogan. I'm a fellow from the class of 2015 and 2016, but I'm also here in my capacity as the vice chair of the APAC Alumni Association. And on behalf of the Alumni Association, let me be the first to officially welcome today's graduates into the APAC alumni family. We are really excited to have you all join us. For many of my fellow alumni, our APAC fellowship marked the beginning of careers in public service. And we are excited to see how your yeah, fellowship experience know. will impact your careers. The fellowship is an unparalleled opportunity to understand what makes Capitol Hill tick and get a sense of where you might see yourself in this vast landscape of players that are engaged in the political process. The great thing about being a fellow on Capitol Hill is that everyone's fellowship experience is a snapshot in time that captures that moment in our nation's history. Your time on the Hill is no different. Though you likely had what some would call an atypical fellowship experience following the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we hope that it hasn't changed your initial passion for public service and AAPI representation that drove you to apply to and accept this fellowship in the first place. Many of the alumni felt that the alumni network was one of the strongest parts of our fellowship experience, which is why we established the Fellowship Alumni Association in 2017. Just to be clear, the support and mentoring doesn't stop because you're no longer an APAX fellow. So please continue to reach out to fellowship alumni as you navigate what comes next in these uncertain times. So to Wartha, Nari, Ariel, Munjot, Nick, Erica, and Ridwan, congratulations on all of your accomplishments in your fellowship and best of luck in the future. Thank you so much, Priyanka, um, for those words from the Alumni Association too. And um, right before we finish out for the day, just want to say thank you to everybody. I think we've hit um, at one point around 80 plus different people who've tuned in. And even though we couldn't do this in person, I still am you know, really excited that we had so many people here. We had so many great speakers from Congressman Farah to Congresswoman Meng to Congresswoman Judy Chu and of course, Secretary Mineta and everybody's host offices who came out to support. I see a lot of family and friends on here as well too, which is really exciting. And, maybe something that we normally wouldn't have been able to have had if this was in person. 
Um, and just to close it out for our fellows, um, even though this is technically our virtual celebration and a graduation, um, you know, we do have different staggered end times. So some of you guys I know have one more week. Some of you guys have another month still with your offices. Um, we have certificates of completion that have been signed by our president and CEO, Madeline, as well as Congresswoman Chu um, on behalf of APEX and KPAC to commemorate all that you guys have done in the last nine months. And so we'll be sending those certificates of completion to you guys individually, as well as a gift from APEX. Uh, we'll be sending you guys your own um, Shinola notebooks as well to, to use however you want. You can journal it in it. You can, you know, write the next large legislative proposal for the future in there. Just want to say thank you so much. It's been great working with you guys from the alumni side and since I came on board um, on APEX staff too, to be on this side as well and just seeing what you guys have accomplished and just really excited for, you know, what's going to come in the future. So if everybody can just join me in wishing all of our seven fellows this year, an amazing congratulations. Thank you to everybody and our special guests who have taken the time out of their day, in the middle of their day, to come join us on this Zoom call. We really appreciate it, and we couldn't do it with all of you guys, too. Thank you all again. Thank you. Congratulations.